Okay, now we're recording, so don't say anything that you shouldn't. Okay, you are all set to go. If you need me, just call out. Okay, we'll do. Thank you very much. All right, so now that I've checked in with everybody, uh, this meeting of the Finance Committee is being held over Zoom, if you would like to participate, the meeting information is available on the agenda on the Lunenburg website at the calendar. Um, I think there were just going to be a couple of items that we would be taking votes on, and those would be roll call votes. Um, one would be around the minutes, and one would be around the capital plan policy, planning policy. And with that, I believe we have everybody here who's going to be here. So I'll go ahead and get started and ask if anybody happens to have any public comment that they wanted to make. I do. Or announcements. Okay, we're gonna fly right through this agenda. Can I, can I make a comment? Yes, you can. Sorry, okay. Um, so a uh, couple of comments. Um, first, uh, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, and, and send condolences to the, the family of Mickey Herrick, uh, who I learned this week passed away. Um, Mickey uh, is a, a lifelong resident of Lunenburg, uh, business owner. Uh, he was a coach for many years at the high school, parent and, and grandparent of of kids in the Lunenburg school system, uh, brother of our uh, longtime town clerk. Um, and, uh, and for a very brief period, when I was in high school, my boss, uh, when I washed dishes and sat people at, at Mickey's place. And uh, Mickey was a complete original uh, and, uh, and I will miss him. And I know many others will, will also miss him. Um, the other, uh, the other uh, thing that I wanted to uh, uh, just to call out was I thought that the town meeting um, was really a, a great success. I think some of the issues, certainly uh, some of the articles we spent an awful long time on, uh, probably more than more time than most of us would have liked. Uh, but in the end, uh, I think it was a, a great display of good hearing of the issues and democracy working as it as it always seems to in Lunenburg. Um, and, uh, and I was, I was really proud and enthusiastic, if a little tired, uh, coming out of last Saturday. Yeah, I should ask, did anybody have any, um, comments or questions about how that went or, or, you know, things you wish you had known going into it? Everything just ran as, okay. I, I mean, you know, some, I was, you know, I think the more controversial items were, you know, well outside of, of our domain. Um, you know, I certainly expressed some opinions on some of them, but, you know, it's, uh, I don't think, I can't, don't recall a town meeting where everybody's been happy all of the time, you know, so. Um. No, definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, which actually uh, will come right into finance committee procedure discussion. And part of um, the reason why I just wanted to keep this on the agenda um, was to make sure that we do go back and visit those things that we said that we wanted to make sure we did. And I know one of the, um, and I say we loosely here because I know that the next time that there's a meeting, it's gonna be you, you folks that are, are going to be um, doing it. But I, um, one of the things that I think would be a really important thing to do would be to hit up the notion of, and I know we discussed it very, very briefly, um, the notion of all meetings after the first public hearing of the finance committee be posted as public hearing. And as soon as we know that there might be something else coming up and then Basically, you guys can then make a determination whether you want to shut off discussion after a certain point. And, you know, like, but I think that um, to the extent possible, making sure that we get a recommendation um, made is important. Um, and so I would just leave um, 
that as a as a potential way to address some of the um, the concerns. And I also think that uh, a lot of the discussion around um, trying to take a, a really long look at the infrastructure needs of the town, particularly around the buildings and, and going at it from a, this is what we can afford over the next couple of years. What does that mean that we can really make a recommendation to do? Um, I, th I think that, that that has a lot going for it as well. Um, but did anybody else give any thought to um, the fiscal policy, uh, fis uh, fiscal procedures um, in terms I, of how you'd like to see them go? I have, but I have some questions relative to the comments that you just made, Terry. So okay. <laughs> can we just unpack a couple of those? Um, so first of all, um, if I recall correctly, your term ends at the end of June. Is it your intent to resign before that based on the, the comment that you just made? No, I was just basically saying that I can say that I think it's a great idea that if you guys go ahead and do public hearings leading into town oh, okay. meetings, but All right. I don't but have to worry still, about that. You're still intending to be here for a few more meetings. I missed Yeah, my I'll be here for a few more meetings. Um, as, and actually, I the probably what I should have commented on earlier or announced earlier was I believe that they're planning a town finance committee appointing committee meeting on June 15th to... Okay. to um, try to make some recommendations about or to to select um, new members. Um, okay, that's good to know. Um, okay. So, which actually I should ask you at this point whether or not you, you folks want to, because um, Heather and my terms end on June 30th, you can either reorganize in June or you can reorganize in July when you have the new members. I think we should do it when we have the new members. Personally, I I don't I don't have a strong preference on it. Um, when Dave and I joined, we joined immediately because the previous members left immediately. Um, but uh, I I I don't have a preference either way. Yeah, I wasn't planning on leaving early, but you know I could if you guys want you know want me to. I, I don't. I don't, <laughs> it's don't mind. Um, but yeah, so, so did you have other questions or thoughts? Yeah, I did. So, okay. um, sorry, but you, you led me to believe something that I wasn't sure. I'm about. sorry. Okay. Um, so with respect to the public hearing idea, this would be after, for all meetings following the official public hearing that would go, that we've historically gone through all the articles open the public hearing for discussion and questions. And then typically at that day, we voted on um, our recommendations on those articles. There are usually two-ish, maybe three subsequent meetings after that. And we would, we would um, post those agendas as public hearings because as evidenced over the last month or so, there are items that aren't fully resolved at the public hearing due to a variety of circumstances, and they deserve a public hearing for, for people to ask questions and address those issues uh, through the Finance Committee Forum. Is that a right? Right, and, and concurrent with that is the, the problem with trying to do a public hearing um, is that the lead time has, is, is longer. Yeah, public yeah. hearing post then for a, um, and it's easier to cancel a public hearing than it is to try to schedule one late. So if there's something on the warrant that looks like it should have a public hearing and the information has not yet come up, I would post it as a public hearing. Yeah, um, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. I actually started formulating a list of things if we want to start off with that. I, that would be fine. I can present. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm cutting Peter off because I know that you had said that you had some thoughts that you wanted to share. So I don't know if you I, I just had to start from the list. That that was the big one that, that I want to just ask you for clarification on, Terry. Yeah. I've got uh, at least one other item, but I'll defer to Chris for now. It's fine. So what I was thinking is um, if there were additional things 
um, we could just add it to this as part of the discussion. Okay. I didn't send it out beforehand because I didn't want to violate any. Um, I appreciate that. Rules, but <clears throat> so I kind of went with the what was really good this year, what was improved, but still is not maybe a hundred percent, and what could be a focus for next year. Okay. Um, can everyone see this? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I mean, right off the bat, I think we had a solid budget and good financial health. So, you know, just as a what was good this year. Um, I did like the 48 hours to review documents and to give me time to, to kind of get through it and you know, think about questions I might ask. Um, I think Heather's on. Heather, I, I really did appreciate those capital plan one sheeters. And I think you got all the pertinent information on them. And I, I think it helped to, to really understand what was being discussed where in the past, sometimes I didn't really even understand what a, like, I, I'm not sure I still know what a track list is. Although it, <laughs> and we'll That's get to on that. my list. <laughs> I figured it might be. Um, I, I think it was good. There was good patience for the three new members. And, and honestly, I think five of us are under two years. So um, that was more of a thank you to um, both um, town manager and you know, and um, the the town directors as well as um, my fellow board members, um, I think, and perhaps it's related to the forty eight hour. I think it, there was good, open, and honest dialogue, and I think there was difficult questions asked throughout the process, and the, and they were answered. So um, I think that's that's healthy. Um, I think improved, but not one hundred percent. Again, I, I like the common drive approach. I would prefer that we uh, just drop all documents in there versus um, emails. Um, I would also prefer that maybe the town establish the drive and train you know, people on how to use it. Um, I think once you know how to use it, it's probably pretty easy. Um, and then maybe an ability to make certain documents accessible to the public. Um, again, to maybe encourage more um, public participation and, and, um, and that sort of thing. Um, like you said, I, I think we began discussions on infrastructure, staffing projects and large projects, staffing projections and large projects. Um, with with uh, you know, the tone of this uh, town meeting being, you know, there's definitely a, an appetite, I think, to move forward on making building changes one way or another. Um, I think that these are going to be important so that we don't um, do that in lieu of, you know, what we need on the staffing side or on infrastructure side. So perhaps a more comprehensive five-year, 10-year plan. And again, perhaps maybe this is what we focus on in like kind of our fall meetings leading into the, the budget season. Um, I, I don't know if that's the right time or not. Um, I like the discussions that we had on grants and other sources of funding. Um, although I, I still would like to have a little bit more of an explanation of the source of the fund, the use, who controls it, et cetera. That would be helpful to me at least. Excuse me. Um, Peter, you know, I, I think you were gonna talk about this one. The large unbudgeted purchases, um, you know, for example, the track list um, should be brought to at least FinCom attention. Um, be, you know, because I think we should have it, at least a word in it, because otherwise it would be something that we would recommend at town meeting. Um, kind of a focus for next year, we, we talked a little bit about this, but maybe didn't take any steps towards it is review and approval from boards and commissions with oversight. So for example, cemeteries and parks and, and um, anything related to conservation or whatever it is, you know, they should have some level of oversight and approval of uh, what's brought before us. Um, and then including that, you know, beyond just the current year, longer term projects in case money becomes available towards the end of the year, um, there's a, already a discussion on what it might be used for. Um, and then this was to what um, Terry had said, you know, schedule additional public hearings. And, and honestly, I think there needs to be a drop to date on any um, budget articles, um, even if it's you know, a week before, and we have the ability to have a public hearing, I, I, I do think um, at all costs, we should we should try to have a, a drop dead date. So those are kind of my thoughts. And if anyone else had anything else, I could 
try to either take notes on this or make this a living document. And uh, I think this is a great list, Chris. Thanks for doing this. Um, so with respect to, um, you need a respect- good though. You need a good, you always start with something good. Remember that. Yeah. Yeah. My school, my good daughter's school. Talk no, no, I, I agree with that. I agree with, all, <laughs> I think I agree with everything on here. I just, um, so, um, for the, for the unbudgeted expenditures, I actually looked at fiscal policy. I looked at the, I looked at the charter. I looked at, you know, it, there's, there's no good place to put this in our, in our existing um, taxonomy, I don't think. Um, so I do think that maybe we just need kind of like a, maybe an annual operating, operating principles document. Maybe this could begin, you know, this could be the first step in that direction. Like here are our operating principles and our plans for this year. The school committee does something similar and they have like an operating principles document. And maybe that, maybe that would be a, a good approach. Um, Is that the right principle? It's, uh, yeah, that's the right yeah. principle. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, with respect to the, with respect specifically to the unbudgeted purchases, um, I, I think that there, this, this relates to a couple of things. Number one is I'd like to see us do something around, I mentioned this uh, probably about midway through the budget process, which I, I think that we should think about how we normalize um, and, and create an apples to apples view of what we're spending in each department. And that includes fully burdened uh uh, personnel costs, um, and it also should include capital, and and track that on a year to year basis. Uh, so that that's number one. Number two is, I think that specifically with rec- with respect to unbudgeted articles, and this really, I know it's weird how these relate, but for example, Chapter seventy revenue and unrestricted local aid is captured in the omnibus budget, chapter 90 is not. And, and I'm, I'm sure that the town manager or the finance director could explain why, um, but, but I, I think that that's a whole category of, of, of money that sort of gets reported on, depending upon the level of depth that the DPW director wants to go into when he's reporting to us. But I, I do think that if we're spending money from a grant or we're spending over $10,000 that was not captured in the omnibus um, budget, that there should be an agenda item and it should be reported under that agenda item to the finance committee. Not to say that the finance committee would make a recommendation or, or not. We might not have the, um, uh, we might not have the, even the authority to do that but at least it's adding transparency to the process. Um, you know, I, I personally, just over the last few weeks, a lot of questions have popped into my head around uh, the pavement program, uh, which I know falls under chapter 90. And, you know, I think that we ought to have a, a more thorough understanding specifically of that program. Um, so any event, I, I, I think we're on the right track here. Yeah, I would, I would say that there's, um, and again, just in terms of just calling out spending that exists off of the budget, I think that's, that's fair. And I think a, a report to the finance committee as it's, as it's occurring, one, and two, even during the budget season, um, I know that, um, you know, if there's an opportunity to present it as grants obtained and and expended and you know like here's how the town made out with our legislators that you know like and I know that you you do it Heather I know you you talk about it but um I think because you talk about it in so many different places it it's not necessarily here that that you know we hear it or see it in um as we're looking or considering um information in the budget 
And I think the other thing is it might also be interesting to, when you're doing your apples to apples comparison, one of the things that would be hard would be to try to figure out a way to weight it because apples to apples in a, in a tight economy wouldn't necessarily, you know, it's, I, it would make sense that anything that's health and safety would what might need to go up, but anything that's recreational in nature might not. So anything, and that's, that's where you get into, you know, like what's, um, I guess, um, yeah, actually the, the word went out of my head. That's, I didn't sleep, I didn't sleep enough last night, I guess. <laughs> So one thing, Terry, just to pull on that legislators topic is I know the legislators occasionally go to the um, Board of Selectmen, but perhaps leading into their budgets season, they should um, be requested to, to join us. Um, a lot of what they do during that time is, is stuff that we're looking at and, you know, to hear, to hear from us and honestly kind of even hold their feet to the fire on certain things would is, is something I think we should do. Well, we could, we could certainly invite them to come. I know that the town manager meets regularly with them, especially in budget season. So, and maybe it's hearing from Heather on what, what the discussions are, what's being supported. Um, but I also think that, yeah, especially because they're new, I think it would be helpful to, to uh, for the finance committee to have them come in. I know that there are certain times of the year that are worse to have them come in than others. Um, Cause I, I think when I was trying to chase down uh, to have uh, Jen Benson or um, who did I get in touch with? Um, with? Yeah, it was Tran Benson. And I can't remember the third person's name. I don't vote for him. Steve, hey. Thank you. <laughs> um, the, it was it was tough, but they would would be happy to send somebody if there was an if there was an agenda item that they wanted us to discuss. And I don't um, I don't know um, Heather, how close to when they're putting the budget together is it that you guys really go over what the priorities for Lunenburg are? It's before their budget season starts, so they know going into it what our top priorities are. Um, and that's the list that the, the select board discusses at a, a meeting. Um, I think they'd be happy to meet with the finance committee, they, um, especially this new group. Um, yeah, there is definitely, you know, and it, it came up at town meeting and, and it was precipitated by our comments in the, the letter in the, in the warrant. You know, I feel like we have not had an adequate dialogue with them. We've participated in some joint meetings with the Board of Selectmen. Um, they appeared at a Board of Selectmen meeting within the last few months. And I actually submitted some questions through the chat box, through the chairman uh, to them, um, specifically around my favorite topic, local aid. Um, I've harassed them both by email and on Facebook. Um, and and across the board, I don't feel that our my questions uh, have been adequately answered. Uh, so I would, you know, and and by the way, I think that there's a need for dialogue both before their budget process starts, um, which is usually what Q1 maybe they really get started in earnest in Q2. Um, you know, kind of that period between when the when the governor's budget comes out and we have our our first um, taste of what what the outlook is uh, and and when they get to work in earnest. You know, I mean, fortunately, the it looks as if to me, you know, the, the Senate budget that came out this week looks like it's a little bit better for us to the tune of maybe fifty thousand dollars in in Chapter 70. Um you know, but I'd at least I'd like to have a dialogue about that. Yeah, no, I think that that makes perfect sense. I think the other thing is that you, you had uh, a new senator and a, and a new um, representative who had never been through a budget process before. So um, having been through it once, hopefully they'll, they'll be better prepared next year 
and it would be good to, to have that discussion. What, what time of year is a good year to do that, Heather? Um, to meet with them before they get into the budget process or? Yeah, yeah before they get into the budget process. Uh, so right around um, after the governor releases his budget, I would say, or, or right before. Mm-hmm. Which is right around the time of your five-year forecast. Right. Right? I mean, it's all kind of the same few weeks, right? Right. Oh, yeah. It's crunch time all around. Yeah. Um, so basically, then then in the fall would be good. Because they're not thinking about it yet. Although they're into elections, I guess. So they're... Well, in an off year, they're not. But... Yeah. yeah, in an off year, it might be it might be good just to to um, have them come in in the fall. And um, but I, the other thing is that my, I know that you have a series of priorities that are typically identified um, through the um, board of selectmen, select board. Um, that uh, is really the the. the Projects that can go forward through that process really depend on how the budget gets marked up and where there's room for um, which projects might be on on hook for this year because they fit something. Um, and does that not get determined until the budget season as well, or is that something that they start talking about early? That gets, um, when it gets to the House and Senate, when they're working through their budget, that's when they start working and try to working in amendments to the budget, which would okay. be the earmarks. Yeah. Right, the earmarks. Okay. So-, so that might be a good time where we, you know, we get together, put together a list and then sign, a, you know, seven finance committee person you know, document out to their staff and to them, you know, that here's where our priorities are. And as a finance committee, we believe this is where some of your priorities should align as well. Yeah, but for earmarks, for earmarks, and Heather, you, could you add a little color to that? Because in my, my interpretation of what's happened with respect to earmarks is, is that, you know, you get some broad parameters, you give a, you, you, you know kind of what the dollar value is that's going to fly and not going to fly. And then, you know, each member gets a certain, (laughs) you know, amount of money that they have to spread across all their requests. It it kind of seems like that's what's happening. Is that, is that a poor interpretation or? Um, I would say, yeah, it's, it's expected that they be realistic um, requests. So asking for a million dollar, you know, abatement for a building is not something that's you're going to see happen. So, but um, as far as the priority list, that does get fleshed out by the select board. And that's what's submitted to them in priority order. And sometimes they, it, what happens is, you know, say the top priority isn't, um, the full dollar amounts, not something that they realistically can get through. It might be something lower on the priority list. And you guys pretty much negotiate this as you're going into it, don't you? I mean, you sit down and have conversations with them and a little bit of push pull about what's possible. At the select boards meeting? No, you- no, no, no. With the, um, the state reps. The list is submitted to them after our meeting and um, yeah, they check back in making sure that it's the same list throughout the the budget cycle. And um, they knew going into this year that it would be highly unlikely that we'd probably get any earmarks. If anything, it would be something small. Um, So that was, an expectation going in because we have very freshman uh, legislators. Right. Right. But yeah, I think um, 
I would definitely have them come in though and just just go over how that went for them. And then Chris, I don't know that we would necessarily generate the priorities, but I certainly think that it would be good for the finance committee to also support the recommendations put forward by the board of selectmen and um, the town. You know, I, and we can sit here and pontificate about how we'd like to work with them. I, I, I think that, you know, assuming it's, thank you very much, we don't want to work with you. Assuming it's not that, um, you know, how we can help them and, and how we can fit into their process and be constructive um, is as much of an unknown to me because I've ne no legislator has ever explained that to me. Um, so, you know, I, I think that there's, and, and, and I understand that, you know, they spend a, a lot of time with town managers and mayors and, you know, that there's a lot of direct contact like that, but that doesn't come with a whole lot of transparency to the voters, right? I mean, Heather may or may not report on the results of those meetings, Whereas when, when we interact with them as a board, we have to do it publicly. And, and I think that there's some value to that. Right, that was my thought as well is, is that, you know, it's one thing if you're behind off the record having these discussions, it's yet another thing if you're, you know, you're being Zoom taped and reported on by the Lunenburg Ledger and maybe the Sentinel or. Right. And a lot of what they, what they do has can have huge effects on us. I mean, we talked about, you know, the $88,000 or whatever it was on the police force budget this year. Um, we had all sorts of unfunded mandates that come down. You know, those are other things that we really need to, you know, make sure they understand the impacts of that on our, um, you know, our small town. And, and there are issues that we're dealing with that, at our scale, we can have very little impact on, but the state can potentially have great impact because of their negotiating and budget power or, or, or regulatory power. Right. You know, case in point, waste removal, which is a hot topic lately, right? So, um, you know, I think that there are ways that we could potentially leverage our representation in Boston that, that perhaps we haven't. Okay. Any um, any other items on the procedure list? Because it is it's a it's a it's a great summary of everything that's happened this year. And I appreciate you pulling it together. Um, can you scroll down a little bit, Chris? Okay. So. That first bullet under focus for the new year, review and approval for boards and commissions with oversight. So, so this is an issue that came up um, in my first year, last year, um, where we started asking the question, particularly of like the DPW director, you know, has this been before the cemetery commission, the parks commission, that kind of thing. Um, and, and it, it seemed as if we were making progress in that direction. So I think that that's good. Um, but I do think that if we had a, you know, kind of emblazoned into this in a document that we all agree to, it has a certain force and effect and forcing function that we can then, that, that we can then apply. So I think that that's a, a great thing. In case money becomes available, are you talking about like uh, end of year money, un unexpended Stuff. Yeah, so like if, you know, parks might have money, for example, um, and they may say, oh, you know, we could fix some fences that have become in disrepair or this, you know, these basketball courts that, you know, the rims are broken or something, whatever it is, right? I mean, those are just small examples, but the alignment of that, um, you know, early, you know, could help them, you know, rather than, you know, you know chasing thoughts at the last minute. That was kind of my thought. Oh, it's almost more of a, a multi-year plan kind of thing. So if you can tick something off the next year, go ahead and do it. Yeah, and I think there's, and I've said before, I think, I think it would be good for 
boards and committees or commissions that have oversight um, that we ask that there's a recommendation from that or a recommendation of or a word of support of that particular budget area for them that they, right. they take some kind of action to yeah. you know if we if we were to come up with it and this would require you know similar to this um this issue around we'll just call it the the trackless issue but you know large large unbudgeted expenditures if if we could come to some agreement with the town manager and the board of selectmen that this is something that we're going to follow um you know, it, it might help to rationalize, you know, where the cases are that we're, we're spending year end money to do certain things and where we're purposely rolling that over into free cash. Um, and and I, I suspect that those discussions are had somewhere, um, but, but to my knowledge, they've never been had with the, with the finance committee. Uh, typically, they, yeah. Typically, they wouldn't be had with the finance committee unless we were talking about interdepartmental transfers. So, um, if something was leaving one area of the budget to go into another area, um, so so let yeah. You, let me give you an example. So, um, and and this might not have hit my threshold. I don't recall the exact numbers, but a couple of years ago. Um, when we were doing the project to uh, improve Wallace Park, um, which I believe was a capital plan item. Uh, and I believe we came up short uh, in what was appropriated in the capital plan. Um, there was some amount of money that came out of the, DPD, the, the DPW budget to, to offset that shortage. And, you know, to my knowledge, that was never discussed publicly. Not to say that it was a bad thing. I think it was probably a good thing. But I, I think that there's a certain amount of transparency that, that ought to be had, right? You know, we appropriated a certain amount of money in, in the capital plan. It wasn't enough. We're moving the money. Everybody agrees. Okay, it's, it's understood. But at least that information is, is discussed publicly. Yeah, I don't remember that. Um, but I think I, I, I think that there's there's nothing wrong with transparency. I think that that's really one of the one of the functions of the finance committee is to spotlight um, what's going on. Um, I I don't know if at the end of the year if there. I do remember when I first started on the committee, and and it was that one of the things that had been being asked for was a budget to actual. And unfortunately, um, I don't know if there's a way to do it because everything gets spent or appropriated somehow, whether it's to, um, to, it, to free cash or if it is supporting another part of the budget. Um, so it's hard to say where, where there's um, money left over, but um, no, I get your point. I don't, Heather, are you following any of this and does any of this make sense to you? I'm listening, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and I, I don't know if- When you is say it budget to actuals, I think what, um, what you were, referencing was that POs are um, opened at the beginning of a fiscal year for um, you might be the whole line item or close to the whole line item amount, but they're not, um, it's just an open PO. So it's showing um, that that's uh, in. It's fully appropriated. Fully appropriated, right. But um, in the end, that PO may be closed out where there's an excess. Right, and that that process is something that that you and Karen go through um, at the end of the year when you're getting ready to close out the year, or is that something that happens sooner? I mean, if the depart the departments 
um, it's between the departments and Karen typically, I mean, they close okay. out, you know, if, if that, um, say it's for a particular expense and it wasn't fully expended, that PO could be closed out. So really it would be more, more on the, the part of the um, oversight commissions to be in a position to say to the directors that report to them that, you know, yeah, this would be really good if we could do that. Is there money left in the budget for us to do that? And say for in, in this case of parks, if the DPW director said, yes, we can do that, um, then really it wouldn't, it wouldn't come through us at all. Um, I don't. Um, yeah, I see that more as a conversation between the department head and um, whichever, uh, if that department head is uh, working with a elected board, like the board, board right. um, and if there's available funds, I mean, the department head's job is day-to-day -day operations and to make sure all expenditures and those um, responsibilities are getting accomplished through the year. So through the- Right, and they're tracking it based on what's in the budget for particular, you know, obviously the library has its own. So the library director is tracking the budget according to what's in the library. Parks um, is being tracked based on what's in there for parks, cemetery for what's in there for cemetery. Um, so when the, the directors are meeting with all of these um, boards or hearing from all these boards, they're, they're basically, they should have the information about how much of the $100,000 that was appropriated um, in the budget for something was spent. They would get that from the director or, or no? Yes, if they had that request, yeah. Okay. So if the, so that basically at this point, the park, like parks would ask for the DPW director, the library director, um, and like all of the different department heads would have that. The DPW guy is just like, he's just everywhere. So it's kind of. <laughs> yes. um, the miscellaneous. Of mm, yeah. <laughs> really is. And other duties as requested. So. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, I'm, and I'm not looking to usurp the authority of the board of selectmen or the town manager, but you know, there's, there's, there's checks and balances and there's different branches of government. We are a legislative branch um, and, and they are an executive branch. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I don't, I paid pretty close attention. I don't recall too many agenda items in the last couple of years where, you know, year end spending has been discussed at the board of selectmen, maybe I've missed it, um, but I don't, I don't think it has been. Um, and and you know, I just I, I feel like town meeting is appropriating this money. If it's not being rolled over to free cash for reappropriation, then town meeting there there, there needs to be some level of transparency of, of of what's happening with that money that was appropriated. Well, Karen's done an end of the year report. She does quarterly reports that yeah, and an end of year report. Yeah. And that's usually where that that level of specificity would come in because she she goes through each of the um the areas. Yeah. And is is year end money discussed with the board of selectmen during that process? What to do with year end money? Yeah. No, it's reporting on what the surpluses or deficits are. Okay, well, that's, I mean, that, but that's half the story, right? Yeah, and Peter, it's, just, you know, the select board is not the only board, elected board or, you know, commission that um, is in the, you know, in that branch that, the executive branch that has, you know, um, oversight, if you will, to things that, have budgetary implications. So that was kind of the point of the whole thing is, is maybe, you know, select board meets regularly, town managers always at those meetings. It's just some of these other boards and commissions, um, there should there should be that equivalent level of 
um, oversight and review and approval of the, the money. That was kind of the main point yeah. on this. What, what I would suggest is, you know, obviously this is a topic that, that Chris and I have an interest in, and I think Terry has some interest. I, I would ask that at some meeting in the not too distant future, the, the town manager and the finance director kind of break this out for us in terms of what the process is and how it works, particularly with respect to, you know, year end spending and, and what I would call spending that was not enumerated in the budget. Um, and explain to us how it works. And then we engage in a dialogue around can it, can it or should it be improved? I don't remember. I just remember when I first got on, and I would I would ask, and it would be the the chairperson would just. It's all spent. It's all spent. Okay, okay so it's all zeroed out. So it's like, okay. So, but no, it is a good point. Um, anything else from anybody? Any questions, comments? Nice start, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was great, Chris. Thank you. I'll post this into the OneDrive too. And um, uh, Heather, if you want me to email it to you, I can email it to you and Karen. Again, I, I do think we made some good improvements this year. Um, I don't want to just focus on what we didn't do. Oh no, no, no. And I think, and I, again, yeah, I agree that that, you know, like having having the information earlier was helpful. And um, I think the, d the department heads are getting much more polished at um, putting the presentations together so that they're ready earlier, which is nice. Yeah. Um, I can't find my stop sharing button. We're, we're also, you know, clearly over the course of the last year, we've been operating in, you know, it, I, I think it's important to, to note that we've made progress while operating in adverse conditions. And, and I think that there's a lot to be said for that. I, I don't want, you know, um, Chris, there you go. Um, I don't, I don't want any of these comments to be construed as, as even critical. You know what I mean? I, I, I hope they're taken as constructive because, I think that the work that the town manager and and the, the finance director and and their departments have done over the last year has been exemplary and and I I couldn't possibly praise them enough because while we disagree on some issues, I could never do their job. Oh God, no. <laughs> um, okay, if there's nothing else on the um, procedures for tonight, um, fiscal policy. The capital planning, I did hear from Damon McQuaid, just um, the chair of the capital planning committee. And it, the only change that they're looking for is the dollar amount. So really there's no other language to change. Um, everything else would have stayed the same. So it's just to update the capital project threshold referred to in section 3.02. A1 and 3.02 A2 from the amount of 10,000 to make it 20,000. Um, which I, I think we've had some discussion on. I don't know if people feel the need for more discussion or they want to go ahead and support that recommendation. Unfortunately, since Dave isn't here. Um, Does Dave support it? Uh, Dave, I believe, supported it, and the capital plan committee, or the capital planning committee, also supported it. So, yeah, I, I have I have reservations about increasing it too much, and and I think that it th this the process that we use does serve us well, but I'm willing to support this as as a mechanism to kind of see how it goes and he, see how it shakes out over the course of the next year. Uh, well, well, let me ask this, and, and this is really more for Heather than, um, because basically part of the 
point of increasing it from 10 to 20,000 was really more around the building maintenance issues and the whole notion of trying to um, get smaller projects pushed back into the budget. Um, but some of those projects appear to be building related. And I know that at this point you're, you've, I don't know if you've already filled it or you're filling the, or we just approved a building person, an additional building person to, which I don't, I don't know what their role was necessarily going to be, or if it would, if it would feed into this, but is there going to be a separate type of budget for building maintenance issues aside from capital planning and other DPW type activities? There already is within the public facilities line that covers maintenance at our town facilities. Um, and then but basically would that maintenance now also cover those little projects like, you know, a kitchen remodel or um, things like that? Or is that something that works better going through capital planning? Um, so we already do some um, smaller projects for the various buildings under that budget. So the projects that go forward in the capital plan are ones that would exceed you know, our typical appropriation. And um, so increasing the, the threshold um, I looked forward in, in the next three years and in fiscal 23, there were two projects that would fall in um, that category of under 20,000, one in fiscal 24 and three in fiscal 25. And that's not to say other projects won't, you know, be fleshed out in the next um, round of capital planning. Um, but that's that would be, those would have to be fall under that umbrella of the public facilities if it's outside the definition. Heather, what do you that, think? I'm sorry, go ahead, Terry. No, go ahead. What do you think the effect of that will be on that, on that budget line? Will we still be planning two or three years down the road with respect to expenses that fall under $20,000? Or can we expect a massive increase in that line because everybody wants to get their sub $20,000 projects in next year? Um, yeah, I don't see, I don't expect there to be a huge impact. Um, I think it would, it's something that we can accommodate and it's just gonna require more long-term planning. Okay. All right. Does anyone have a feeling one way or the other about a uh, recommendation regarding the change? I just had one thing to add to that for rationale um, was outside of what you had talked about, Terry, was that it would be modernizing that policy. Um, mm -hmm. We looked at various other towns um, most fell between 15 and 25,000 around, you know, towns comparable to us in our region. Um, so 10,000 was an outlier amount. Especially right, yeah. I think, the, I think the way Damon put it was that 10,000 doesn't go as far as <laughs> yes. it used to. So, yeah. That's the truth. Well, if anybody wants to make a motion one way or the other, um, or not, then we'll take it up or not. I uh, move that the Finance Committee recommend approval to the proposed changes in the capital plan uh, fiscal policy. I'll second it. Okay, we have a second. Do we have any discussion? Yes, yeah, state the amount. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You're going to state the amount? The amount I mean, is the figure. The dollar figure is changing from 10,000 to 20,000. Yeah, I referenced the proposed change. So it's 20,000. 
So just a question. That's the only change. It, it, the one becomes a two. That's it. <laughs> okay. Could be a like typographical error. Huh? <laughs> be almost like a typographical error. You know? <laughs> yeah, hopefully they don't put it in as a nine. Um, okay. Yeah, they had, they had no other changes that they wanted to recommend at this time. Okay. I just tend to like to see the change, but um, if that's all it is, then I'm fine. Yeah, that was the only reason why I went ahead and brought it up, even without uh, language change. He was looking to change the 10,000 to 20,000 in those sections of the policy. So will this go to the Board of Selectmen basically immediately following our recommendation? I would believe so. Heather would probably take it to them. Yes. And, uh, Chairman Alonso is on the Capital Planning Committee. So we can also explain that when it comes up. Yep. Um, all set to vote. Okay. Peter Beardmore. Hi. Chris Menard. Hi. Jay Simeone. Hi. Evan Waters. Hi. And I for myself. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm a little slow. I'm just a little slow. Um, Minutes. The, in the um, file, there were minutes from February 18th and March 3rd. I'm sorry, March 4th. Did people have a chance to review those? And are we ready to move on those? I did not. I did. I'm fine. Okay. I saw them when I logged on tonight. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and take them up. Um, do, unless anybody had any concerns about any of them, we'll take them together. Do we, do we want to vote or not? I mean, three out of the five of us read them. I read them. Chris read them. Evan read them. No, I said I had just noticed them tonight. I have not. Oh, you noticed them. I thought you said you had seen them. Okay. I saw them as I logged into the OneDrive and said, oh, shoot, there's, there's two in there. minutes. All right. Um, then, um. Uh, yeah, we can wait and we can we can take a vote at the next meeting. Um, Are we at risk on those February meetings minutes of not adhering to? Oh, we're already oh, out of date. Oh yeah, like jaywalking. Yeah, I um, take jaywalking <laughs> seriously. All right. Well, basically, no. of the five people here, if two abstain, I'm prepared to vote in favor of the minutes. So, if we want to go ahead and at least take up February. 18th, if that will make you feel better. But February 25th still has some work on them because of OPEB. Oh, right. Debt. So I didn't, when I volunteered to do those minutes, I didn't realize that was the OPEB night. So I uh, moved to approve the minutes from February 18th. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Peter. Aye. Chris. Aye. Jay. I'll abstain. Evan. Evan. I'll abstain as well. I haven't read them. And I for myself, so those minutes are approved. And then we'll come back to 3-4 after. Uh, hopefully I'll have 225 for the next meeting. Um, committee and department reports. Dave isn't here. Let me show um, So, Peter, do you have any? Uh, school committee met last Wednesday. Um, we could go yesterday, um, relatively short meeting and no uh, budgetary related items. The only thing budgetary related was uh, they, they voted to release the funds to the class of 2021 um, because they canceled the prom and end of year activities and are giving their class officers the way with all to plan events on their own post-graduation. Okay. Any other committee or department reports? No. Okay. So we'll go to town manager and finance director reports if there are any. Uh, the only thing I was going to mention tonight, and Peter mentioned it early earlier in the meeting, was that the Senate released their budget proposal um, compared to the governor's budget proposal, which is the, are the estimates we use for fiscal 22. 
for the governor's budget. Uh, the overall impact is about $7,118 7, more than the governor's number. And that's a combination of um, a little less than 3,000 more in receipts and uh, less in the assessments, about almost 5,000 less in assessments. Okay. Can I ask a question? Um, I, I didn't watch select board this week, but was there a discussion on price increase on trash bags? Yes, just a, a verbal um, yeah. and similar to what I discussed with the finance committee before that it will be likely between a 30 and 40% increase um, due to um, the proposal that was received. Uh, the bid was awarded to E.L. Harvey. That was the, the sole bidder. And um, working out the contract details currently, and we'll also be soliciting prices from different bag vendors. So that uh, the bag price uh, from the vendor will also come into play as far as the cost of the bags. That we were on three years left on the contract with the bag vendor. No, we were looking. To, we were looking to coincide the term of the agreement with the bag vendor with the contract with um, the trash and recycling hauler. I misunderstood that. Heather, what is the um... What's the timing and the, the process for that? Is that something that the, number one, is it something that needs to happen before the 1st of July? And is it, and is it something that the Board of Selectmen needs to vote on or how does, how does that work? The last time we uh, did a bag increase um, was not this past, last two couple years ago. But, yeah, two years ago. Um, it was presented in, in detail about the bag prices to give uh, just at a meeting um, and it was prior to the start of the new fiscal year so it was uh, to give sufficient notice or sent as well because we had to work with the retailers too as far as bag prices um, so that was I would say done you know about a month before it went into into effect so we're trying to work under that timeline as well um, the trash hauler, Yell Harvey, they'll be doing their own outreach as part of the contract, uh, gearing up, ready to go July 1. Um, but that is more about uh, customer service information, how to contact them, and um, that their truck is going to be the one that people are going to be seeing, not the Casella truck. And is the schedule going to remain the same? Yes. They'll have the same routes, same days, same hours as exists now. Can you consider getting contractor bags as part of the suite of available bag purchases? So thickness level, is that where you're talking? Yeah, the, yeah, the whole contractor bag right. size and thickness so that you can keep one in your garage and not have it rip. I can I to drag it out to any of the driveway. <laughs> My driveway is 800 feet long. That's a lot mm -hmm. of dragging. Yeah. You, you need a gator. <laughs> you got one for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else we, for the. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do we have any idea how many people in town are using the town? trash pickup versus private contractor? The, we, so our trash is um, tracked by tonnage, not for users. Yeah. Um, so we know, um, you know, we track tonnage. Yeah. And not user. Have, so. have you been tracking tonnage year to year to see if it's going up or down? Yes, Karen does that, Karen Brochu. So um, she has all that data. She might not have it at her fingertips. Correct. So we might need to, maybe she does. No, I don't have it at my fingertips, that's <laughs> for sure. But I can certainly check that for you. Okay. 
And my guess is um, that because there's been so many new developments over the course of the 10 year contract, I don't know um, if there's a way to, to parse out how much that might be related to new development. Although any of the new development that involved um, like anything at Tritown or anything at any of the condo complexes probably are doing private anyway. Private, so. should be private, yeah. yeah. So do we have the the um, recycling police coming around again? The uh, recycling enforcement position that was um, discussed during the budget cycle, yep. that um, is expected to occur again this year, yeah, using the Recycled Dividends Program grant funds. So would it be possible for them to kind of, as they're going house to house, see if the person has a yellow bag or a bin indicating private? Yeah, they, I'm sure we could incorporate that into to try to get a feel on how many people um, use the program. Cool. I know from just driving down my little area during the day, one of the holidays, I counted like at least five different private hauler totes out at the end of the driveways. You know, I'm, I know that there's a there's a lot, and actually, when um, when I first moved to Lunenburg, because the previous homeowners had used a private vendor, we continued to use the private vendor, um, mostly just because we didn't know how things worked. So, and it never lived in a town where um, the town didn't just automatically provide the pick. It, we lived in usually more urban areas. So, um, I think that, um, you know, it, it's been a, it's been a great fodder for discussion on Facebook over the last couple of days. Um, the, you know, I, I think it may be even a function. It would be really interesting to see if we could get a count from the from 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 those folks that are doing the uh, the enforcement work, I almost think it might even be subject to neighborhood. You know, like I spend a lot of time on Arbor Street, and I know that there's a ton of people that use private haulers in that area and up on Canterbury Drive. In my neighborhood on Pleasant Street and Brown Ave, I think most people use the backs. So I, and it may be a function of the size of houses, the number of people in families. You know, I, I live alone. I have my kids about, you know, a little less than half time. I go through a small bag a week. To me, it's, if you raise it, if you raise it 30, 40%, it's still a much better deal than what a private hauler would cost me. So. Uh, I'm two to three large bags a week. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. That's a big difference. But, yeah. Yeah. But I'm very wasteful. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Maybe we need to have a talk <laughs> about it. Yeah. <laughs> He needs this a personal a yard dumpster too, but he needs a personal visit from the recycle police. Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. With that, um, is there um, any public comment at all? Oh, vote on Saturday. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Like And if that's the only public comment that we have, then um, next meeting will be May 27th, assuming everybody's around. Nobody's trying to get off early to try to get to the Cape or something. Is that the weekend before Memorial Day? The Thursday. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have anything we need to talk about? Does everybody want a long weekend? Same. I'd be, I mean, unless there's something hot, I'd be okay with punting until June. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. All right, then, um, Heather or Karen, there's no reason why we have to meet May 27th, is there? Not that I know of. No, not that I know of as well. Okay, so we won't meet on May 27th. We'll, um, our first meeting will be June something. Because <laughs> I haven't looked that far ahead. Very precise. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the second Tuesday in June. Thursday. 
Thursday. Thank you. Oh my God, I'm not getting out in time. <laughs> I lost my mind. Okay. So the second second Thursday in June. And um, if you have any anything that you want on the agenda, please let me know in advance. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to decide if it, it shouldn't be late enough that we'll know who the, um, I don't think that the finance finance committee appointing committee would have met yet. Um, That'll be the 10th. So the, so the second, second Thursday is the 10th. Uh, so they're meeting the following Tuesday. Right. Okay. All right. Well then with that, um, you guys, uh, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor, Peter. Aye. Chris. Aye. Jay. Aye. 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 And I for myself, thank you very much and have a great um, month. <laughs> Several Good night, weeks. everyone. Good night, Good night everyone. Thanks Good very much. Yeah.